what's up guys it's me amit and you're watching the indian buyer usually when we see a piece of tech that is way cheaper than the other in the category like way way cheaper we start thinking that it's probably inferior in the sum or the other way but redmi 4 and redmi note 4 are the result of xiaomi not really cutting down from the high-end flagship but more building up as high as they can at a certain price and this time they have come up with redmi note 4 that will cost you around 10,000 for the lowest variant and around 13,000 for the topmost variant. And I must say, they are still killing the budget game. So I want to shine the light on the fact that the good phones are getting cheap and cheap phones are getting good. This phone surprisingly has got so much hype in the Indian market than the other Redmi 4 and 4A counterparts. With my 3 weeks of uses, I really felt like I got a good back for my money. I must say, I am incredibly impressed with this phone. Well, I took the phone out of the box for the first time, my first impression was, have they sent me to the wrong package? I mean, seriously, the design is classy, the phone is damn good looking. It certainly doesn't look like a 10,000 or even 13,000 rupees phone from any angle. The hardware, Xiaomi phones are always in this shamelessly, unapologetically competitive price. But this year, it steps up to the next level, offering such an incredible piece of tech at such a low price. This is one of the coolest phones that I have ever used. And in fact, it's the best budget smartphone of 2017. Let me elaborate. So naturally, it all starts with the design, the way it looks, the way it feels, the way it functions, and the Redmi Note 4 kind of nails all of these. It's just wow looking at the front. The bezels are still big, especially at the forehead and the chin. No doubt that is a pretty common Xiaomi design, top to bottom, nothing too crazy about it. But the placement is standard, the tactile feedback on those buttons is just amazing. It's better than the every phone that I have ever used so far. The chamfered edges going all around the button gives it a really premium feel. And that makes me wonder what the price tag one more time. The headphone jack is still at the top, surprisingly they haven't forgotten the IO blaster notification LED indicator and you probably might not guess where the LED indicator is until you see it light up for the first time. The 2.5 curved glass is super duper shiny and that might be a problem when you are using the phone in a harsh sunlight. There is a fingerprint scanner at the back which is really sweet and it has got more than 95% of success rate. Initially it took me time to get used to this nifty feature but then I started using it like just every single time. Overall, the build quality and the feel in the hand is very premium and definitely it sits at the top pretty clearly in my book at this price tag. The speaker position is one more thing that has improved over all its predecessor. It's not located at the back now, instead it is located at the bottom. Although it's still an issue if you are a hardcore gamer or a person who watches lots of videos. Since when you hold it horizontally in your hand, you may muffle the speaker but that's not a biggest problem for me. Now if we look at the display, it's 1080p Full HD IPS display. The panel is 5.5 inch diagonally, it's pretty much bright in the sunny day. Also the weighing angle has actually no color fading if viewed from the sides. Overall a very colorful, well saturated, well lit display with which I have no complaints whatsoever. So the specs of Redmi Note 4 are super fantastic on paper and probably more than any of the other brands mid-range devices. It comes with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 625 octa-core processor with Adreno 506 GPU. The one I am holding has 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage memory, which is actually the topmost variant of this series. This sells for 13,000 rupees, and if you want something below than this, so there are two more variants which have 2 gigs of RAM, 32 GB internal, and another 3 gigs of RAM and 32 GB internal, and this sells for 10,000 and 12,000 respectively. The storage is expandable though. Since the phone does have a hybrid slot and which also means that you can either put 2 SIMs or 1 nano SIM and 1 micro SD card up to 128 gigs of storage memory. The software experience of Redmi Note 4 is pretty classic. It has mostly remained unchanged and does come with Marshmallow out of the box, which is almost 2 years old Android version. But Xiaomi has recently released a knockout update for this device, better late than never. It does come with built-in apps like security and stuff that you cannot really rid of but it doesn't seem to hamper or interfere phone functionality. Since my 3 weeks of uses, I haven't encountered any sorts of hiccup or lags. The overall UI experience is buttery smooth. Everyday task was performed like a breeze. 
maybe it's got to do with the Snapdragon 625 processor on the board or the 4 gigs of RAM inside it. You always have consistent frame rates, smooth and quick animations. To my surprise, it did really well with some of the high-end graphic games that I've tried. For example, the Asphalt 8 Airborne. FYI, this game eats up almost 1.5 gigs of your storage. But this only you can imagine what kind of graphic is this game be having. I played this game with high graphic settings and there were no major frame drops that I have encountered. The game wasn't smooth as expected but it was playable. Surely you can play such games with lower or mid graphic settings. So the Snapdragon 625 definitely do justice with this device and the price that you pay for this phone. On the downside, I have noticed that the phone does heat up while playing such high graphic games. It doesn't burn your hand but surely gets super warm. But at the end of day, hands down, one of the coolest and of course the most impressive feature of Redmi Note 4 is a giant 4100mAh battery which is still missing in some of the high-end flagship phones. I got more than 6 hours of screen on time on a single 0 to 100 charge. In these 3 weeks, I have used Redmi Note 4 as my daily driver. Apart from my 1 year old Leco LE2 which is again 64GB variant. Anyway, I never go easy on my phone. I do a lot of Instagram, watch videos on YouTube, casual gaming, trying out new apps, huge camera usage and about 3-4 to four hours of hotspot data that I use for my lappy. With all this torture, I still left the juice for another half day and that is spectacular. Now if we talk about the camera, this phone has 13 megapixel rear camera with 2.2 aperture but doesn't have an optical image stabilizer which is kind of downside but you can still get pretty good shots out of this camera when you are really lit or when you are outdoors and having lots of lights. But as soon as you start losing the light, you are going to see lot of things like noise in the frame because this raising the ISO shoots on shutter speed to keep that motion blur. You are going to witness a lot of less dynamic range and lot more contrast overall just lot less natural color and the photo appears to be oversaturated which is good thing in some scenarios and bad in others. It has a traditional MIUI camera app, nothing great about it but this time around on manual mode, there are no option to control the manual focus and the shutter speed. I can understand that the consumer who are going to buy this phone are not pro consumers and actually not going to buy this phone because of its camera. It is capable of recording 1080p videos at 30 frames per second but 4K is not supported which is again a downside that too when you have a full HD display screen. The video looks shaky and distorted in fast moving objects. The front facing 5 megapixel shooter does a fairly decent job too. Not much expected but happy with what it produces. I'm pretty much happy with overall performance of the camera not to forget at this price bracket. So if your budget limits to buy a phone below 15,000 then I would recommend this Redmi Note 4 over other brands in the same budget category. Well that's me and that's because of my deep love towards the MIUI skin from the Xiaomi devices which is like a layer over the stock Android look and I completely love that. I really feel that this phone can beat phones that cost about 18 to 20,000 rupees in some other brands, mainly in design and in performance to some extent. So if you're falling into tight budget, then this phone is definitely for you. Go grab one for yourself right away. Trust me, you will never regret on this. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Show some love by pressing the like button. Feel free to share this video and feel free to subscribe to our channel since actually it's free. This is Ahmed signing up for now. Hope you had a great time. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.